This tutorial will show you that today it cannot be simpler to accurately model an anchored retaining wall for a deep urban excavation using a non-linear finite element software. It is addressed to civil and geotechnical engineers and students. There are several methods that exist today in order to perform such designs, including simple methods like the limit state equilibrium or the subgrade reaction method, or more complicated methods such as the finite finite difference and finite element methods. While each of these methods has its pros and cons when wanting to design a support system for an excavation, it is known that only nonlinear two-phase finite element software that takes into account soil structure interaction like Z-soil can lead to an accurate prediction of ground settlement behind a retaining wall. In the past, the major setback of this method has been the time required to generate the finite element model. Today this has changed, and in this tutorial we will show you that it cannot be simpler to generate finite element models of retaining walls quickly and efficiently using ZS walls. ZS walls is a template that simplifies the definition of such an excavation problem and then generates the Z-soil finite element model including the construction stages for you. With ZS walls, the model generation and analysis can be completed in a matter of minutes, while still benefiting from the calculation power of a real non-linear finite element software. Let us consider the following construction project at a high school in the vicinity of Lausanne, Switzerland. It involves the construction of an underground gym requiring a 10 metre deep excavation in sandy and clay soils. A pre-design for the retaining wall is presented in the following sketch. It includes a sheet pile wall with two rows of anchors and a blocking slab. The geometry and all of the key material parameters are given. We will not go through each detail right now, but please take a print screen so that you can follow the rest of the tutorial easily. In order to validate this pre-design, there are three things that we must verify. First, that the internal bearing capacity of each of the structural elements is adequate to withstand the induced forces. Next, that the ground settlements behind the wall do not exceed a certain limit value. And finally, that the global stability of the problem is fulfilled. Each of these things can be completed using ZS walls, so now let us open the program. A window opens allowing us to check that the project pre-selection is correct. Here we have a sheet pile wall, we have anchors, two-phase steady state analysis, no impermeable barrier below the excavation, and for this example we will be using a coarse mesh. This information will allow default values to be filled in automatically. Now we can create a new file using File, Save As. First we will define the excavation geometry. We begin with fixing an excavation depth of 10 metres and a wall length of 18 metres, both which are defined from the ground surface level. We can see that the visualisation of the defined geometry is updated immediately. Then we move to the excavation width. Here we have 20 metres, remembering that we have a central axis of symmetry for the excavation. So with our 20 metre width in the model, we are simulating a 40 metre wide excavation. Now we can fix the external boundaries of the model. These need to be far enough away so that we avoid boundary effects influencing the results. For this tutorial to keep things visible, We'll fix the outer boundary at 40 metres from the wall and a model height of 24 metres. Next we can move to the surface loads behind the wall. Here we will apply the surface load from directly behind the wall to a distance of 40 metres which is the external boundary. The defined charge can be variable but here we fix a constant 30 kPa. Now we can start defining the structural elements. First the sheet pile wall, which is a PU22 profile. 
As we have selected the sheet pile wall in the project pre-selection, some of the data is already defined to the default values like the Young's modulus and the unit weight. If we wish, we can modify these values, or we can simply fill in the cross-sectional area and the inertia data for the PU22 profile. Next, we move to the anchors. After adding each anchor, we simply fill in all of the data, including the pre-stress force, depth, free and bond lengths, spacing, the angle of the anchor, the drill hole diameter, and the maximum shear resistance. Again, default values are given, but please check each value to be sure that it is correct. Now we move to the blocking slab or the bottom buttress. Here we assume that the blocking slab will take 75% of the unloading due to the last excavation step. So we fix 75% and a relative installation time of 0.75. And then we simply fill in the characteristics of the, the slab. Now we've finished defining the structural elements so we can move to the soil data. This is simply filled in using the borehole data window. At the top we can see that the groundwater table is set to a depth of 6 metres below the ground surface level. In ZS walls, two constitutive models are available. The more Coulomb model and the hardening soil model. In this case, for the top three materials, we select the hardening soil model and activate the small strain extension. It is an advanced constitutive model, so if you do not already have experience with this model, we advise you to read the Z-Soil Hardening Soil Report to learn more about it and the different parameters that need to be defined. We strongly recommend its use for correctly reproducing the displacements caused by deep excavations and in general for all projects where, so where soil deformations are of importance. Note that the stiffer base material, the molasse, is modelled with a simpler and more well-known, more Coulomb model. Now we can check the defined excavation steps. These have been completed according to the definition of structural elements that we have introduced and also the unloadings or relative installation time defined. We will check each step now by clicking at different locations on the timeline at the bottom of the screen. Everything looks to be correct, so we can run the analysis. After clicking on Run Analysis, it takes a few moments for the real finite element model to be generated by ZS Walls before the calculation module is launched, which we can then follow. Here we have sped up the video, but this calculation took less than three minutes. The calculation time will depend significantly on the size of the model generated and the number of steps introduced. Once the calculation is finished, we see that the post-processing window of Z-Soil opens. This is to generate the different results for the report. After a few moments, it automatically closes and we are shown the analysis log. Here we can see that each phase of the analysis was completed successfully. Now we are given the option to directly open the report or to select what content we want included in the report. Here we leave the default values included and open the report directly to check the results. The first graphic shows us the geometry of the model and then the finite element mesh that was generated. Then we can see all of the different input parameters for the wall, for the analysis, the anchors, the bottom buttress, the construction stages, and then finally the soil parameters we can check to make sure that we didn't make any mistakes. 
Then we can start to look at the results. First we are presented with the normal displacements for the wall and the settlements behind the wall. And these are presented at each construction stage and then an envelope for all of the construction stages. Then we can see the forces that were generated in the wall, again at each construction stage and then an envelope for, every, for all in construction stages. After this we can see the tables for all of this data. And then finally we can see the time history of axial force in the anchors. In order to check the global stability of the excavation, let's go back to our model in ZS walls. To check the stability, we will remove the bottom buttress, making the hypothesis that failure will occur before its installation. We will then rerun the simulation and add a safety analysis at the end of stage 3, after full unloading without the bottom buttress. ZS walls will find a safety factor by applying a strength reduction algorithm to all soils, progressively dividing all values of cohesion and the tangent of friction angle by 1.05, then 1.1, then 1.15, until failure occurs. Here the global safety factor for the problem is found to be between 1.25 and 1.3, before the bottom buttress is realised. For users with a Z-Soil license who have some experience with Z-Soil, the INF files that are generated can be accessed and used to further exploit the model or to make changes. ZS Walls makes it simpler and faster to generate 2D finite element models of deep excavations, which can then be further used to extrude into larger 3D models for projects where plane strain assumption cannot be made. So here we arrive at the end of the tutorial. We hope that you have learnt a thing or two and have an appreciation for the power of tools such as ZS Walls and ZSoil. If you would like to learn more about nonlinear computational geomechanics using ZSoil, please visit the ZSoil website or purchase the book Computational Geomechanics on PC, which is available on Amazon.